Affinity Designer version 2 has got a wonderful warp feature now, Vector Mesh Warp. So you can warp designs live and you can modify it in all kinds of different ways. You can use text, you can use curves, you can use brush strokes, etc. And I'm just going to use text in this example. So layers down to the bottom and just click here. And you will see this is that fourth item. You can select one of the presets. I'm going to go with mesh. You can change them later, but you've got a number of other ones, quad, arcs, etc. But mesh, straight away, you can see you've got these nodes. That's what happens. Just generates nodes. And you can modify those nodes by using the node tool. So just go over here, node tool. So select that, and then you can manipulate these nodes. But you also notice in the layers panel, it's created a group. And you can expand that group out and you can still see the word text. So you can select text and you can then change it. So if you decide, oh, I made a mistake, I wanted the word type, you can just use the artistic text tool, change the word text to type. You can go back to the warp group and at any point, if you can't see these nodes, just click here. This is the key thing. Sometimes they appear, sometimes they don't, but I always find that that brings it back by just clicking here. So now let's modify the nodes. So you can just drag upwards or drag downwards. You can also drag that way. You can drag any way, any direction you want. You can also, the key thing is the cursor. So if you go hover over here, you can see you've got that cursor. That means you can move it. So click on it and you can drag. Also, you'll notice with that, you've got these anchor points or direction points whatever they're called in, <laughs> I've got so many applications, they all got different names for these, these points, direction points, whatever. So you can drag that around, move it around. And you can also change it from smooth to, as it says, sharp or cusp and click there. And that will result obviously by just moving that point without affecting this one. And you can create, of course, different distortions using that. I must admit, very rarely do that, but you can do it if you wish. You can still continue to move that around. Now you can hover over here and you can see you get this curve, the cursor changes, and you can just drag that, drag that back and forth. You can also double click on the line and now you should be able to just click on that line. You should be able to just click it and add a point. Now sometimes I find it seems to require a double click. Sometimes you can accidentally click and you end up clicking it and adding it below or some other position. However, you'll notice I've got a plus here as I hover over here inside. So I hover anywhere inside. If I go to that line, you can see the curve there. But again, double click there and you can add a point and it creates it vertical and horizontal and it follows that line, it follows this line. So if I modify this a bit up to there and then double click up here, you can see it follows that line as well. But you can also add points in the center. So you just double click there. Now weirdly, it adds a point here. And I'm just gonna show you this. Just click here, just, and it's quite easy to go out of the warp as well. So just to bring it back again, just click here. Very easy to deselect it. Always just click here to bring it back. But again, there you can see you can add a point, but you can also just, just click subtle, just one click, and then you can drag that whole thing. You can also select all those points and do the same. Drag those, and they will all move, theoretically. Yes, <laughs> sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I have to say, this Finth Designer version two, this is the first release. And there does seem to be some really odd quirks. I've been running through this quite a few times over the last couple of days. And every time I use it, it does seem to have a mind of its own, whether it selects things or selects the center, but you should be out and also selecting multiple shapes. And it also, I would suggest, do a file and save because it has crashed quite a few times with the warp where it just suddenly you just click on the curve and bang, it just goes. So be aware that it doesn't always, so you can select multiple points and you should be able to drag those. That should work each and every time. But I have noticed many a time I've selected all of them and dragged and nothing moves. Very odd. There are some quirks there. However, 
you can notice I've made a very complex mesh now. In fact, actually, sometimes it's actually not a good idea to make too complex a mesh. But what you can do, you can always at any point just turn around and say, oh, you know what? I want to reset it. So you can put it. Now it resets it to the number of points it's got, the nodes. So it won't reset it to three by three. I wish they would add a feature where you can put it five, or five by five or 10 by 10 or 15 by 15 or whatever. That would be a real nice preset. But you can also go through here and say, put it to quad and then just manipulate it and just move this up. Now, as soon as you do anything like this, in some of these cases, it will suddenly set itself back to mesh. In this case, it doesn't, it still keeps it as quad. It's still a quad as far as, but as soon as you, let's just modify that. Yes, as soon as you modify and tweak it outside of the accepted range for the quad, it will then make it back just to mesh. And that's all it is. And then again, double click. And so I click there and it added the point there. It's, that's odd. I don't know, but to me, yep. See that time it adds it there. It's very odd. There are some odd things about this. I'm not saying it's, uh, so every time I use it, I find different things. That I think that's very strange. Go to the text and what you can do, you can also side right click and you can duplicate. So you can duplicate that design. And then as you see, as you move that around, that warps as well. It's independent of the other text. So you can change the word. You don't have to obviously have the word text. You might decide, you know what? I want the word type there. So you can just, if you can select it somehow, just type. Also another thing I find that is sometimes you can end up getting this warp, this text. It becomes very hard to edit the text. You might like to perhaps deselect things and maybe that's the way and then apply. The, I'm not certain, but it is hard to edit once you've got the word. And I have accidentally added more words and I just can't seem to access the other ones. It is very odd again. But you can see I can create that. Also, I can add shapes. So I can add a shape to it. So that star design now is added in there and that will also be warped as well. So you can create some interesting combinations of different designs all combined together. And this warp group is still live. So you can go back here and you can continue to modify it and move it around and rotate it. That can be warped and changed and modified. And that, that's the next thing. So also what you can do, you can go to the type and you can rotate that as well. And again, you can see it warp in there. So there's a variety of different options you do. It's a warp group. So you want to actually, I better show how to get rid of it. So let's just go back here, back up to the node tool. So node tool selected there. And you'll notice then along this control bar, you can reset, but you can also convert to curves. So if you want to remove it, you don't want these curves anymore. You just want it to be a normal group. You can just click here. So convert to curves and it's done. So that's a quick way of removing the curves. But I'm just going to undo there because I still want to continue to modify. Now, also another option, say you select a node. So again, you've got the node tool selected. Node tool, node has been selected. You can drag that there. You decide, I don't want that node anymore. Just use the delete key. That's all it is, just as before with standard nodes with pass, just use press delete and it's gone. So you can remove them and again, you can go there and move the curve or double click. Again, losing that. Click on there and again, double click line to add a point to it. However, it's a warp group and you can add a warp to the warp group to create even more weirder and unusual warps. So you can always just go down here and you can say, oh, let's just go for mesh or maybe one of the others. Say twist. And you see what happens then. It creates a warp group on top of the other one. Now the other one is still live. So if I want to, I can click on that. You can see that warp group there. And again, I can do the same here. So I can say twist on that one. So I've got now a twist and a twist here. So again, let's just modify this twist. Let's just change the value here. You can see distort it, go up to this one, and then I can move, distort this one. Now, weirdly, the value is the same, but they are separate groups. So if I just change it, let's just change it completely. So quad, is that another bug that seems to be 
So I do that quad. Now I go to this walk group. So you can see I've still got the twist. But it did seem to be connecting that value. That did seem a bit odd. Anyway, that's maybe another bug that's perhaps is an issue. I don't know. But you can have different ones. So you've got the walk group, click there, and you've got quad. Click there, and you can see you've got twist. So you can add, I don't know how many walk groups, maybe three or four, maybe 10, I don't know. And again, at any point, if you decide, I don't want this one, you can always convert it back to curves. And weirdly, the top one doesn't just convert, the group below converts as well, which is a bit of an odd feature. But I suppose it's converting the whole thing to curves. And you've got curves, curves, curves. Even the text is changed curves. So you can't edit the whole thing. So it's, you've got to be aware, if you click convert to curve, it converts everything into a curve, which is perhaps not so useful. Maybe there should be a feature to remove the warp without convert. Anyway, I hope you found this tutorial of interest, even though I have pointed out quite a lot of quirky things. Now, I've run through this quite a few times in a number of tutorials, and each and every time I use it, I think that's strange. It just seems to work in odd ways where you suddenly can double click sometimes and click another time. So there's just odd quirks in it. Hopefully, over time, a lot of these things will be ironed out and it will not seem to be slightly inconsistent at times. But it's a great feature. And of course, without doing the convert to curve, you've still got the walk groups. And of course, what you can do, you can add them to a symbols. That also has some lot of quirks as well, I have noticed. But symbols panel, or maybe save it to assets. And that warp, and I haven't tested that. I'm just going to go and test it now. So you can see you've got here assets and you've got that selected and you can then, let's just go to the group there. Oh, whoops. Add from selection. That's what I want, add from selection. And now you can see the walk group added there so I can drag that across. Yes. So all the walk group information is all saved in the assets and is also saved in the symbols. Though I did find odd issues with symbols where it seems to have some odd quirks especially with the layer effects. So be aware of that. It does seem to have problems. Anyway, please put some comments, any questions you have about this, and also any sort of suggestions about some of the things that I've done through this. Maybe I'm just doing them wrong. Please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear. Thank you much.